Well, hello there, and welcome to another MotoKib adventure video. Uh, today I'm going to do a modular helmet review, the C3. Uh, I know that Shoeberth has come out with the C3 Pro, and uh, there's a few little improvements, but if you can find the smoke and deal on RevZilla right now for this helmet, uh, it's probably worth it. So, first off, uh, you saw me flip up this modular helmet thing. Uh, that's pretty big. It's kind of um, useful if you're stopping at a gas station and you want to just breathe and open up. Uh, if you're on a, like a huge touring bike and you're not too worried about protection, uh, I'd probably advise against this, but you could probably open it up while you're touring on your motorcycle. Um, and it's also just useful if like you have to uh, take out a DSLR camera and take a picture, or uh, I've also seen it used by uh, motorcycle safety course instructors, um, basically so they don't have to keep pulling off their helmet every time they want to talk to their uh, trainees. Trainees? Yeah, trainees. It's also super easy to use if, you're, uh, if you have glasses. So a lot of helmets, uh, you have that full facing and it's kind of in the way. Uh, with this, it kind of opens up this area and you can put your glasses in a lot easier, um, including sunglasses too, but I'll get to that later. And then also, if you're a moto ref, that's the guys that uh, ride in cycling races, they usually are having to talk to the actual cyclists, the racers there, and uh, they have to sometimes flip up their helmet and talk through that. It's also easier to set up a communication system sometimes. Uh, the Schuberth SRC, which I'll get into later, uh, is one of the options that you can actually replace with the uh, neck roll. But I mean, I don't know if the modular part of that is really uh, relevant to that. So let's move into some of the major uh, pros of this helmet. It's super lightweight. It it weighs about 1500 grams I believe according to Schuberth. Uh, it's very light compared to my RF 1000, the showy I was wearing. So that's a huge plus in my book. Uh, it's definitely going to make it a lot more comfortable on longer rides and uh, you're not going to feel like you have this huge thing hanging on your head the entire day. Schuberth also claims that it's super quiet, uh, which I totally believe. It's They claim that they get 82 decibels max out of this helmet. Uh, they put these in a wind tunnel and they do a lot of testing. So I kind of believe that there's a lot of uh, research and development that goes into this helmet. Now you might be uh, wondering what this front thing here is on my helmet. Um, you'll know that that's a GoPro mount if you have a GoPro. Uh, that does make it a little more loud, obviously. And um, when you open up the vents, so you have vents up here on your head, you have vents up here, and forward is all the way closed, all the way back is open. Um, and then there's a middle spot too. And uh, also you have this chin mount, or chin vent rather, which is closed and now open. And uh, that those those vents work awesome, but the uh, the problem is when you open them, the helmet gets a little more loud. Going in further uh, to the quietness of this helmet, you'll see that there's an extra neck roll on the inside and uh, that kind of seals around your neck and that really makes the helmet quiet if you don't have a huge windscreen that's protecting you like my bike. Moving along down the helmet, you have for the uh, chin strap, instead of having the D-ring, you have a ratchet strap and basically you just push it in and it locks in place. And then when you want to pull it off, you just pull this tab. And uh, that's super useful if you are uh, you have gloved hands still. All right, so moving along, you notice I have this helmet in like a matte black finish. Uh, a lot of people call that run me over black. I don't really buy into the whole, uh, you know, be seen by having neon green stuff on. Uh, I mean, that's your choice, that's your preference. If you want to do it, go ahead. But uh, I believe in just having a good light set up and, uh, you know, having a bigger bike too sometimes can help. But anyway, uh, with that said, there's a lot of reflective panels on this helmet. So the C3 logo is, or the Schuberth logo and the C3 are reflective on the rear. You have these reflective panels on the bottom. You have the Schuberth uh, name, which is reflective on both sides of that. And then on the inside here, you have reflective panels here and here. So. It's not really, uh, you know, even though it's a matte black helmet, I think you'll be able to see it. Before I move on, another word about this whole ratchet strap, chin uh, strap system. Basically, uh, with this, you have the two mounting points that are normal inside a helmet, which are like 
here and here. Uh, but these also go back towards the rear and mount up to these points here as well. And uh, I'll show you a picture that might illustrate that better um, to give you an idea of what that is. But what that does is with that system in place, it, it prevents the, uh, I think it's called like an anti-roll uh, system or something like that. It basically prevents the helmet from rolling back if you were to impact on your chin. Um, as we noticed too, it comes pinlock ready. So it has, uh, or rather it comes with a pinlock. So the pinlock is this uh, inner thing here. And that actually seals up against the inside of the helmet. And that creates a little bit of insulation with uh, just a thin layer of air. And what that does is it, it's a total anti-fog system. And let me tell you, it does not fog up at all. Um, you'll see, like, sometimes I'll ride in, like, the wet or something, and I'll see all around the pinlock, it's all fogged up, and then the pinlock is just untouched. And generally speaking, this is just your, uh, I mean, you don't really see that in your peripherals too much or anything when you're riding. While we're at the front of this helmet, you'll see that it has this sunshade. Now that is a super useful feature. I never thought that uh, I would really be interested in having that, but um, you know, with my show AR F1000, I used to just wear sunglasses all the time and it wasn't really a big deal. But I noticed that wearing sunglasses, sometimes you would have the pressure points of the actual uh, things that go you know, over your ear to hold the sunglasses on um, inside your helmet. So this is super nice because first off, if you're in the sun and then you suddenly go underneath a bunch of uh, shade and the trees and stuff, you can immediately switch it to a different thing. So you don't also have to have, uh, you know, you don't have to go out with a reflective uh, visor and then, you know, you're caught in the dark too. That's a huge deal in my opinion. So that's kind of an all day riding thing. Uh, this sunshade is infinitely variable and which means that basically you can have it go wherever you want it to go. Um, I usually just throw it all the way down and throw it all the way up when I don't need it. But uh, that's on a cable system as well, so there's no gears meshing or anything like that. So there's no, it's all cable actuated. It's really nice, really smooth. Um, Shoei did a really, or Shoei, Schubert did a really good job on this helmet in terms of that. While we're in the front of this helmet, again, too, you see this removable chin uh, skirt. So I can actually pull this out. It's just Velcro. And so that comes out completely. And now this is open for warmer weather or something like that. Now, when you take this out, it's going to make the helmet a little louder. So it's just what's best for that day specifically. And it just pops back in with the Velcro. So just to add a few more cons to this helmet, uh, or sorry, pros to this helmet. Uh, this system here, this locking system is super nice. It's, I thought that maybe it would be kind of loose or something. It locks up 100%. I don't see it coming up in a crash, and uh, I think that's honestly, um, it's it's safe enough for me. Uh, that's why you see Arai hasn't made a modular helmet. Arai is super concerned about safety and all that stuff. That's just kind of uh, your preference. You know, what I, at the end of the day, it's kind of what fits your head the best, in my opinion. Uh, along with that, all the vents, those vents are actuated really well. They're really nice. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the uh, shield itself, the visor itself, is you know pretty positive locking. Uh, I have noticed that if I'm going high speed on the highway and I'm on a sport bike or something, and I have this flipped open, it wants to close like almost immediately. That could just be a safety feature by them. Uh, some people might not prefer that. I know my my brother likes to ride with that visor open, and he just wears sunglasses underneath. Um, so that's kind of a con, in my opinion, for people that want that, but. Also, it's kind of a safety thing too, in my opinion. Um, sticking with the visor here, you'll see that it kind of just goes down like that. And then you'll hear, I'll get up to the mic. There's a little click there. And so you can you can totally seal that. And that's pretty useful in my opinion, uh, if you're going you know, highway speeds or if it's colder, uh, you don't get that little seeping air in. But you can also, before you close that all the way, you can leave that, leave that slightly open and that's good for city riding too, uh, if you want that down all the way, but um, you still want a little bit of air to uh, come in. Just for reference, I know that uh, probably doesn't mean much to you guys, but the, um, the vents are apparently, when you have both of them open, it's supposed to push two gallons of air through your helmet per second at 65 miles per hour, so that's pretty solid. 
in my opinion, and it definitely vents better than my Shoei RF1000 did. Okay, so let's move on to the cons of this helmet. Basically, with that sun visor in place, you create a cavity within the helmet, and Arai says that that's actually a huge failure point, and that's why their sunshades are on the outside of the helmet. If you've seen the pro shade they make, uh, that's kind of up to you to decide. I think I buy that Arise, you know, making a valid point, uh, but I don't think that this helmet's going to fail under that pressure just because of that reason. Another thing, if you have a helmet lock on your, your bike already installed, uh, without having the D-rings, it's hard to have a helmet lock for this. So um, you can do it with the loop here, uh, but it's, you know, there's a loop there, but it's not really going to work that well. So basically Schubert sells a uh, helmet lock system, which is like a carabiner type thing with a lock on it. Um, and then also a bar that goes through this ratcheting system here. And so that bar goes through and then it creates a hole that you can now mount the helmet to uh, either an existing helmet lock or that carabiner that they have. So that's another 35 bucks you gotta spend if you wanna lock the helmet uh, correctly. I know that Schuberth has the SRC, which is their communication systems, which uh, basically the whole neck roll comes out and uh, you replace the neck roll with something that already has all the stuff in place. Uh, it's, it's super cool in concept and um, I'm sure it works pretty well for like the first three months. I know that uh, one of the guys that comes into the BMW shop talks to me all the time and says, uh, you know, this, this SRC thing keeps failing on me. Uh, he's had three replaced and uh, there's just different things that fail, either a cable frays in the rear or something, because um, I think there's cables running through this at some point, and obviously you have a cable that goes to the mic and everything. Uh, so cables uh, fray and fail, and then also the system itself can be a little wonky. Uh, I know that his Phantom called one of his friends like four times within like 20 minutes or something uh, without his input. So. That's something to consider too if you were looking at this helmet for the communication system that's built in. With that said, there's also a bunch of communication systems that fit on the outside of your helmet uh, that like say Scale Rider makes or uh, yeah, I think that's a Pack Talk and then there's something else, um, the Senna's, all those. So there's, there's definitely aftermarket options that make sense. Overall, I would say I really like this helmet. I'm super glad I bought the helmet. Uh, I don't think that the C3 Pro uh, has a lot of improvements to make on this helmet that make it worth the, you know, if you're if you're getting this helmet at a super good cost, um, you know, it's probably not worth the upgrade, or if you already have one. In my opinion, it's, it's totally worth it. Uh, it fits my head shape really well. It's kind of a uh, more rounded head shape, whereas, say, like a Shoei um, is also pretty rounded, actually, but the Arise might have a longer uh, oval head shape. You know, it's 100%, when you buy a helmet, it has to fit the top of your head correctly. If it doesn't fit your uh, chin area and all that stuff, you can change that with chin pads later and all that, but it has to fit the top of your head or else it's not going to be comfortable. You're gonna wear it for an hour, it's going to start hurting. And uh, also, if you have pressure points, it's not really safe either. I would give this helmet, you know, out of a 10, probably give it a nine out of 10. And I say that because, uh, just the few minor things where you have that, you know, the helmet lock system and, you know, if people are buying this for the SRC, uh, it, it could be a little disappointing, but uh, for the most part, I mean, I super, I just really like this helmet. The modular system, I did not really think I was going to really care for, and now I totally use it all the time. So I would consider looking into this helmet uh, for the price, especially in Red Zilla right now. Uh, we sell these. I know constantly at the BMW motorcycle shop that I work at. So it's definitely worth looking into. Thanks for joining me today on another gear review with Moto Camp Adventure. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. If you liked the video, please click the like button and consider subscribing for more gear reviews like this one. Take care and ride safe.